Now, calories are obviously important in the weight loss equation, as we just learned. But the good news is that you don't actually have to count your calories to control your portion sizes in order to gain full control of your health and reach your ideal body weight. So let's talk about how you can execute that. Okay, we know this may sound crazy, but we sincerely mean it when we say that you can truly eat carbohydrate-rich foods, and we're going to touch on carbohydrates next, but you can eat carbohydrate-rich foods to satisfaction, and you can eat a lot of food to satisfaction. In fact, you can actually eat more food than you might be eating today simply because if you choose the right foods that are actually low in their calorie density and you truly understand the principles of calorie density, then you can feel satisfied while actually decreasing your calorie intake. I know it's backwards. It sounds like hogwash, but hear me out. Okay. First thing we have to do is define calorie density. What the heck is this term? Calorie density is a term that refers to the number of calories in a given weight of food. It also commonly is thought about as the number of calories per pound of edible food. Okay. The calorie density of commonly eaten foods spans a wide range from as far as 60 calories per pound on the left-hand side, all the way upwards of 4,010 calories per pound. Okay. Look on the screen. There's a table that can help you further illustrate the span in calorie density among the foods that you might routinely encounter. In the green light category on the left-hand column, you see things like butter lettuce at 60, broccoli, bananas, sweet potatoes, brown rice, and black beans that span anywhere from 60 north of 600 calories per pound. In the yellow light category, we have foods like brown rice pasta, avocados, dates, which represents a dried fruit, gluten-free bread, dried figs, and almonds. And these span a range from anywhere from about 550 calories per pound north of 2,600 calories per pound. And then finally, in the red light category, we have foods like shrimp and steak and chicken and salmon and Oreos and olive oil. And these span anywhere from 540 calories per pound north of 4,000 calories per pound in the case of olive oil. So you can see that there's, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to get you to have to memorize the calorie density of every single food that's in front of you, because you know what? I haven't memorized it. It's not worth your time. And that's not the point. The point is for you to understand that there's basically three different classifications of foods, the way that we like to think about it. There's green light, there's yellow light, and there's red light foods. So you can see on the screen here that green light foods are the foods that are on the left-hand side, and it may be hard to read. So I'll, I'll read you through this diagram. We got fruits of all shapes, all colors, all sizes. We got starchy vegetables like potatoes and butternut squash. And I'm going to put corn into this category, even though corn is technically a grain. We got legumes like beans and lentils and peas. We also have intact whole grains that are minimally processed grains like brown rice and quinoa and farro and any of these other grains that just have funky names. You also got non-starchy vegetables like tomatoes and cucumbers and broccoli and cauliflower. You got leafy greens like lettuce and arugula and spinach. Herbs and spices, whether you like them fresh, whether you like them dried, whether you like them in a bottle, doesn't really matter. And then you got mushrooms of all shapes and sizes, including shiitake, crimini, portobello, and other Asian varieties. In the middle column, you got yellow light foods. Now, these are foods that are minimally processed or they're actually considered whole plant foods, but they just have a slightly higher fat content and a slightly higher calorie content. And these include things like avocados, nuts and seeds, nut and seed butters, plant based milks, coconut meat, soy products like edamame, tofu, and tempeh, olives, pasta alternatives, sprouted breads, dried fruits, and fermented foods. Now, these foods, again, have a slightly higher calorie count and a slightly higher fat count than the foods in the green light category. And that's okay, but we're just going to be eating them in moderation. And then on the right-hand side, we have the red light category. And the red light category includes foods like red meat, white meat, eggs, all dairy products, oils of any shape, any color, any size, fish and shellfish, processed baked goods like croissants and muffins and cookies. We got sweeteners like high fructose corn syrup, sorbitol, mannitol, maltodextrin. We got refined white foods like white pasta, white bread, white sugar, and white flour. Then we also have coconut products like processed high calorie uh, coconut kefir and coconut aminos and yogurts and ice cream. Then we also have finally processed vegan foods that are foods that you uh, that are marketed as being healthy, but in fact, they're questionable. We'll do a whole nother piece on that one. And that includes things like veggie burgers and vegan cheeses and nut milks and uh, ice creams. Now, here's the thing. 
this can be a lot of information. So you look at this diagram and you go, oh my gosh, there's all these foods in the green. There's all these fruits in the yellow. There's all these fruits in the red. Like, how am I supposed to, do I have to memorize this? Do I have to print out a card and keep it with me when I'm at the grocery store? And the answer is no, this is an evolution. What we suggest is that you get involved in eating according to the green light, yellow light, red light strategy, and you do it over the course of time. And as you get involved in the process, you start to recognize green light foods versus yellow light foods versus red light foods. Now, the beauty is that it might be simpler than you think. And rather than going through this list and trying to memorize all these different names and colors and shapes and sizes, I want you to use a lot of logic with just a few simple rules. The foods on the left-hand side in the green light category just tend to be more water rich. They tend to be very high in fiber. They tend to be as unprocessed as possible or not processed as all. These are foods that you can find from a tree, from a bush, that you can just get outside. If you were caught in the woods and you were backpacking and you just had to go look for food yourself to eat without and you had no weapons to be able to kill an animal, what would you do? Well, you would just probably harvest fruits and eat berries and find vegetables that are growing in the ground. Okay, I want you to think about it from that perspective. You might find some mushrooms that are growing on the ground or on trees. And if you were a mushroom specialist, you might be able to eat some of those. Okay, the yellow light foods, again, these are slightly more processed. These are things that have to go through a manufacturing process in order to become edible, slightly higher fat content, and therefore can be somewhat problematic, but you, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're okay to incorporate into your diet in a small amount. And then finally, the foods in the red light category tend to be mainly of animal origin, high in saturated fat and or processed or ultra processed. It's just that simple. Okay. Now when assembling meals together, we recommend that you freely eat foods from the green light category containing approximately 700 calories per pound or less that you that you eat foods from the yellow light category sparingly and that you try and minimize or completely eliminate foods from the red light category through our own experience through our experience with clients more than 10,000 of them over the course of time through our experience with our colleagues and through the research into the healthiest longest lived populations in the world living in blue zones all around the planet we know without a shadow of a doubt that the long-term success on a low-fat plant-based diet is dependent on building meals around calorie-dense whole plant foods, okay? And, and I want to be very clear when I say this. Foods that are calorie-dense from the whole plant world tend to be lower in their calorie density than the average foods that you would find on the standard American diet. Okay, the standard American diet has an average calorie density north of 2,000 calories per pound. And I'm suggesting that you eat lower on the calorie density scale to get closer to about 700 calories per pound. And that right there can have a dramatic reduction in your total calorie intake. But the beauty is that you don't feel hungry. That's the beauty of this entire system. Okay, Now, we're going to go into bulk and fiber and water. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But I want you to take a look at the other diagram that's on the screen right here. Another way of thinking about green light, yellow light, and red light foods is in looking at this bar diagram, okay? On the very bottom, you see green light foods. And the green light foods basically span a calorie density all the way from 60 to about 700. The yellow light foods span a calorie density of, uh, I believe it's somewhere about 75 north of just a little over 3,000, 3,250 or so. And then the red light foods span the highest range of calorie density all the way from about 300 calories north of 4,000 calories. So if you just look at this diagram, you say to yourself, all right, fine. If I'm going to try and move my diet from kind of like more red light and yellow light foods towards more green light foods, even if you're not going to go 100% green light, then you can understand mathematically, you're going to be lowering your total number of calories. But the beauty is that you can do it in a way where you're not actually getting any hungrier. In fact, you're getting fuller. And that's a good thing for you because we're not trying to put you onto a diet. We're trying to put you onto a lifestyle that is actually going to be sustainable in the long term. And in order to do that, you got to have to make sure you're eating a sufficient amount of food to keep your brain and your muscles satiated at all times. Now, technically speaking, you might look at this diagram and say, okay, well, you know, there's a lot of crossover, Cyrus, right? So if I'm eating foods in the upper levels of the green light category, well, I could also eat the equivalent amount of energy from foods in the middle of the yellow light category or from the bottom of the red light category, right? And you're absolutely right. There's no question because there's crossover between these three categories. But I'm trying to drive home the point here that you want to be eating the most unprocessed foods possible, as much food from the green light category as possible, because that's actually going to keep you full. That's actually going to help uh, maximize your total nutrient density. And that's going to give you the highest 
quantity of micronutrients possible. And that's great for all tissues, including your cardiovascular system, your liver, your kidney, your thyroid gland, your brain, your eyes, and beyond. Okay. Now we talked about bulk and bulk is an important concept in the world of calorie density. Bulk refers to fiber plus water. Bulk is one of the most important nutrients in your food. And it literally talks to your brain to slow or completely shut off your hunger signal known as your apostat. And here's how this works. When you consume foods that are high in fiber and water containing bulk, what happens is that the fiber molecules uh, that are, that are uh, conjugated or, or in close proximity to water end up traveling down your digestive system. There's a three-dimensional matrix that gets masticated or basically gets chewed up by your mouth, travels down your esophagus, gets inside of your stomach, and starts to get partially digested. Once that material gets inside of your small intestine, there are stretch receptors both in your stomach and in your small intestine that begin to distend. So those two organs become slightly larger. And as the walls of those two organs begin to stretch just a little bit, the receptors inside of cells in the wall start to get activated and then they send a signal, a neurological signal directly up to your brain that says, hey brain, there's something inside of me. Maybe you should slow down or maybe you should decrease your appetite because if you can do that, then you can limit the amount of food that's getting in here and I won't be as stretched. And so your brain responds to that signal and says, okay, cool, thank you for the signal. I understand that you are telling me that there's something inside of the digestive system. Let me ask for less food. So you become a little bit less hungry and you're going to recognize that by saying, you know what, like, let me just slow down. Or in fact, I'm not even hungry anymore, but you may not recognize that that signal actually originated inside of your digestive system and your digestive system literally picked up a phone and called the operation center inside of your brain and said, Hey, by the way, there's stuff inside of me. Could you chill out a little bit? Okay. So there's bi-directional neurological transport that actually enables your digestive system and your brain to have a two-way conversation at all times. Now, Scientists actually believe that bulk is the most effective satiety signal. And it's the amount of bulk in your food that is the most important determinant of how satisfied you feel after a meal. I'm going to say that again. Scientists believe that bulk is the single most effective satiety signal and that the amount of bulk in your food is the single most important determinant of how satisfied you feel after a meal. Okay. And as you can see where I'm going with this argument, the foods that are in the green light category are the highest in bulk. And that's where you're going to find the most fiber plus the most water, which means that if we know that eating foods from the green light category is lower in calorie density, that means that they're higher in bulk. That means that you can eat them. You can feel satisfied and you can reduce your calorie intake without even knowing it. That's the beauty of calorie density. Now, the counter argument to this is that you say, okay, well, I understand where you're coming from, Cyrus, but many people who eat a low carbohydrate diet, carnivore diet, actually find themselves to be quite full. And they report back to you, you know, maybe you've tried this in the past, or maybe you have a friend who's doing this and they go, you know what? I only eat one meal a day because I'm not even hungry, right? I just have a dinner and then I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat lunch. And you know what? I'm just pretty much never hungry, right? And so it kind of goes against exactly what I'm saying here. I'm saying that bulk is what keeps you full. And they're saying that no, bulk is actually not what's keeping me full because you know what? I don't really eat that much bulk. I'm eating a ketogenic diet, which means I'm eating a lot of animal products generally. I'm eating a carnivore diet, which means I'm eating a lot of animal products. Or I'm eating a low carbohydrate diet, which means my total fiber intake is quite low. But yet, despite that, I'm actually not that hungry. And that is a true statement because there's another mechanism at play. And that other mechanism is that the foods that they're eating are high in fat and or protein. They usually travel together. And the combination of fat and or protein has a hormonal response inside of your digestive system that then signals back up to your appetite stat that says, slow down, eat less food. And the reason for that is because foods that are high in fat and high in protein tend to take more time to get through your digestive system. And they tend to contain more calories per bite or calories per pound. So your digestive system is literally saying, Hey, there isn't bulk in here, but I do sense that there's a lot of calories in here. And so as a result of that, Hey brain, why don't you just chill out a little bit? And if you chill out, then we don't have to take on as much energy. And it's a self-protective mechanism to prevent you from eating too much. Okay. So this is what people in the low carbohydrate world say. And you know what? They are right. They are absolutely right. But 
what they don't realize is that even though they may not be hungry today and they may have a very well-regulated appetite, over the course of months to years, they may actually become hungrier over the course of time. And part of the reason for that is because when you become fiber depleted over the course of time, it can change the way that your gut metabolizes food. And when you decrease the gut microbiome diversity, you can actually end up with digestive issues. These digestive issues can actually end up causing inflammation, bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea. And that decreases the amount of nutrients that can actually be absorbed into your bloodstream. And as a result of that, you actually are eating food, but you're not getting the nutrients to tissues. So you end up actually basically starving. And as a result of that, you become hungrier. So People who eat a low carbohydrate diet or ketogenic diet often report that they're not hungry in the first few months and they're not hungry maybe in the, over the course of six months, nine months, 12 months, but then over the course of time, things change. And when things change, they start to feel hungry and actually constantly hungry. And they find that sometimes no matter how much food they eat, that it doesn't seem to matter. Okay. Now, researchers have also found that adding fiber rich foods to your meals can significantly increase your total fiber intake and make a dramatic difference on how full you feel right here and right now. And that bulk material, which is again, fiber plus water, that bulk can then go help populate your gut microbiome with bacteria that are very diverse. And as those bacteria continue to propagate and colonize your large intestine, the ability of those bacteria to create an environment that is, that, is, uh, that is able to absorb and manufacture short chain fatty acids for all other tissues as signaling molecules that are anti-inflammatory goes up. So in other words, what that means is that the more fiber you put into your diet, the more likely you are to stimulate gut microbiome diversity, which is going to have uh, significant benefits to tissues all throughout your body. And simultaneously, you're going to feel fuller at every meal. So all you have to remember is that as long as you eat a wide selection of fruits, starchy vegetables, beans, lentils, peas, intact whole grains, non-starchy vegetables, leafy greens, and mushrooms, you can confidently eat large proportions, knowing that they're going to maximize your metabolic health. They're going to maximize your nutrient density. And they're going to prevent you from gaining weight because the calorie density of those foods is actually quite low. And the best part is that when you eat a low fat plant-based whole food diet, generally speaking, you don't actually have to count calories. Again, I said that it's useful in the short term, but in the long term, you don't necessarily have to do it. And you get to eat as many green light foods as you want. You get to eat them as much as possible. And that's a good thing because calorie counting is not sustainable. So my question to you is, does that sound interesting? This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full-length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.